Hello everybody, Puzzle Pieces here with more of- Oh, whoa, calm down guys, calm down, I just moved. <laughs> Back with more of Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, basically we were, we're at the conclusion part where we're talking with Paro and I had to stop the thing, so let's see where- Okay, I think it was something to do with what was found. I can't remember what was said before. Um... Hmm. I think it was the button. That isn't the correct item. Okay, hold on. I can't remember what was said the last time. Hmm. Statue? No, that isn't right. Think, Antoinette. Pipe clear? The pipe clear. There we go. Incriminating Colonel Arbuthnot, who had one of the strongest alibis and whose connection to the Armstrong family was probably the hardest to prove. And the second clue found in the room, Mademoiselle? Thank you. Okay, the second clue was the announcement cigar. Oh, the uh, handkerchief. The handkerchief. Incriminating Princess Dragomirov who, by virtue of her frail physique and the alibi given by her maid and Michelle, was practically in an unassailable position. Then there was the clue found at the shepherd's hut with the incriminating fingerprints. Do you have it, mademoiselle? Uh, it's... oh! Parasol, but I think it's this one here. With Matteo's incriminating fingerprints on it. Not precisely a cricket, you know, Tonio. To incriminate an innocent man? <laughs> Cyrus could swear Matteo had not entered the Calais coach. Michelle informed us the radio was in the baggage car. And I went to put it out of commission. I did not Why? want to destroy the equipment. It must have taken him much saving to purchase. So I only smashed the telegraph key. Signorina, you are a miracle worker for sure. To get the radio working again. I know about these things. That was a stroke of a genius. Mm -hmm. Stick to the point, Monsieur Foscarelli. <laughs> With great pleasure. The Don't be frank. was just hanging there. I found the snowshoes earlier, and then the shepherd's hut. I was supposed to find a good place for the uniform and the stiletto, and the hut was perfect. But I had to break the lock to enter. All I did was go and get the padlock on the radio crate. I didn't mean to point the finger at Matteo. The other red herring was not a herring at all, B but it was certainly red. Oh. Mademoiselle? The kimono. And then to put it in my valise was not a nice trick. <laughs> the kimono is mine, monsieur. And mademoiselle, I had no intention of trying to incriminate you. I, uh... I had to put it someplace, and I thought it would be amusing if you found it there. Oh, oui. You enjoy your little games, Countess. Mademoiselle Freebody, indeed. Well, Madame Arden? I always fancied myself in comedy parts. Bravo, Mr. Poirot. Well done. Applause from an actress of your stature is praise indeed, Madame. We were all at the house, a house filled with almost unendurable pain and sadness. Mm -hmm. The Perkinson brothers were dead, but Cassetti had got clean away. We decided then and there that the sentence of death that Cassetti had escaped would be carried out. Little did we know how many years would pass, how many false leads Mr. Hardman would track down before Cassetti would be found. Whatever country my work took me to, no matter how tough the case, I always saved plenty of time to try and pick up the trail. Mm -hmm. But he kept on the move. Brazil, Mexico, most of Europe. Ratchet was only the last of a string of aliases. Then Mr. Michel wrote to me. It was he who quite by accident had recognized Cassetti traveling aboard the Istanbul to Calais train. When we learned the man, now calling himself Ratchet, frequently traveled to the Middle East aboard the train, we knew we could have some control of the scene of our planned execution. It took months. But in time, Ratchet hired both Hector and Masterman. One of us would have been enough. Two were better. Hector handled all of Ratchet's travel arrangements. With Michelle's help, passage was booked on the same train he would be using to return from his latest excursion to the Orient. 
The rest you seem to know. Oui, madame. Indeed, the rest Poirot knows. <laughs> but I don't understand. You've uncovered everything. We know we did it. How can there be another solution? Simplicity itself. There is among you one who is not who he pretends to be. Ah. With the help of Mademoiselle Marceau, I will now present you with those clues which fit neither solution so far proposed and present you with a truth that will surprise even you. I know some of you suspected something was not All quite right. right. Number three. But let us now look at the clues that fit neither solution so far. Madame Schmidt says she saw the phantom attendant, but we know now it was sheer invention. Yet we have the testimony of an independent witness who says he saw the non-existent small dark attendant actually getting on the train. Mademoiselle? Oh, the engineer. The engineer said that. The engineer. Oui, the engineer while the train was in the Belgrade station. And then there is the crate of Monsieur Ratchet and its unknown occupant. What clues associate themselves with that crate, Mademoiselle? Uh, well, yeah, the second uniform, pile of books, uh, yeah, the pile of books. The pile of books. Oui, the uniform, I think, worn by the person the engineer saw. The pile of books, Mademoiselle, believes were useful in the planning of the crime, yet no one has mentioned them. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the person with access to that key would be in the best position to tell us something of the occupant of that crate. And lastly... There is the little matter of the kidnapping of Mademoiselle Marceau. Yep, I was kidnapped. Yeah, so which one of you kidnapped me, huh? The what? Monsieur Foscarelli. I? I? I would not harm the signorina. It is why we are all here, to punish the kidnapper. She's right, Poirot. How can you think any of us would resort to kidnapping after all we've been through? As you can see, Monsieur Perkinson, we have pieced together much of your story. Only the reasons remain, and I leave those to you. What did you call him? Parkinson's. You called him Parkinson. <gasps> One of that the brother's name. name. Oh! Robert Perkinson. Oh! Silence! At once! You will obey me in this and listen to what Monsieur Perkinson has to say. You owe to Poirot that, I think. Yeah. Please understand. I know how you must hate me. It was my dear wife, Isabella, the unidentified woman the papers mentioned, who pleaded with Paul and me, as the police closed in, to let her take Daisy away. She was sick with grief. Take Daisy away? So wait, Cassetti Daisy's alive? the wrong little <gasps> girl. He crept up while Teresa was alone outside and shot her in cold blood. He was gone again before we knew what had happened. We'd refused his orders to kill Daisy, you see? So he took matters into his own hands <gasps> and killed my little girl by mistake. Oh my gosh. If any group of people could know exactly how my wife felt, you are here before me. And we were afraid. Some accident when the police came. It was unthinkable the little girl should come to harm after we had just buried our own daughter. Some time after I escaped, after Paul had died in the electric chair, and Isabella had identified some John Doe found floating in the harbor as me, I joined Isabella and Daisy in France, where they now lived as mother and daughter. Oh. I knew we should return the child, but my wife would have died the day she was gone. The child now answered to the name of our little girl, Teresa, and called my wife Mama. You understood the meaning of the photograph, Mr. Poirot? Your family, you, your wife, and your little girl. And once I realized that, I knew that you could not be Pierre Michel. Yeah, because he didn't have I a family. I consider who you must be. Only one figure could not be accounted for with certainty. Robert Parkinson. Last year, only days after my Isabella succumbed to a cancer oh. that I think grew inside of her since the day of the kidnapping, 
I sought out Michel. He informed me of the plan to punish Cassetti, a plan that he, despite the death of his niece, never thought he could see through. He showed me the letters Mrs. Hubbard had written to him. He was in a terrible state. Wow. He had seen Cassetti? Yes, twice, on this very train. I could see he was not a strong man and would not be able to face Ratchet. I looked at those letters and asked him one question. Had Mrs. Hubbard or any of the others ever met him in person? His answer was, no. I wanted Cassetti dead as much as any of you. He killed my child and just as surely my wife. Wow. So here I am. But, but my granddaughter? She has been staying with my wife's sister in Belgrade for the past few days. She came aboard the train there last night, dressed in an attendant's uniform. <gasps> she changed into her regular clothes and has been camping out, as she calls it. The nuns at her school have kept up her studies in English as well as French. She is a good student indeed to have brought all her school books with her on the camp out. I told her to study. She has been staying in the baggage oh. car in Ratchet's crate. Last night I took some food from Klaus's kitchen when he had gone off for a moment. And the statue worth four thousand dollars? Oh, that's I gone. Dumped it on a track <laughs> yeah. near Sir Keki Station. It's like yeah, that's gone. This cargo is far more precious. True. At last, the riddle it is solved, n'est-ce pas, mademoiselle? And with a most satisfactory solution, indeed. That's Daisy. That would have been interesting if they did that in the uh, episode in the movie. That's why it was petite, because she's she's small. Oh. Mademoiselle Marceau, mm -hmm. while they enjoy this brief moment before you render your final decision, let us, you and I, see whether you are up to the challenge the Poirot presented to you when our investigation began. Let us check the progress <laughs> report you have been keeping in your scrapbook. Yeah. Let's see just how well, we've done. Mademoiselle Marceau, Poirot must compliment you on a job well done. Yay! You are courageous. You face the dangers without flinching. You solve many puzzles that confront you, mm -hmm. overcome many obstacles with enthusiasm and good humor. Yes. An above average performance in every respect. Yay! Hopefully, with the knowledge you now have of my methods, you might do even better should you ever find yourself faced with another mystery to solve. <laughs> well. Oh, look at that. Ah, we can get through now. Oh yeah, we can get through that little patch there. That's fine. You are the representative of the train company, Mademoiselle Marceau. Mm -hmm. You have been instrumental in assembling the evidence that pointed to the solutions I have now shared. And you have been ill-used. I am truly sorry, Mademoiselle. I left you all of your belongings in that box, except the one I needed back. The key to the security room. Ah. Uh, you now know why. Because she was in there. My precious cargo had to eat. You have proven to be most ingenious. Twice you almost discovered my secret passenger. Yeah, I was like, where was I she when... I left the uh... for you to discover. Okay. I had no doubt you would free yourself. Uh. If not, I would have found an anonymous way to inform someone of your whereabouts. Mm -hmm. I understand why you did it. But still. As Monsieur Perkinson so rightly observes, you have proven your gray cells to be almost equal to those of Hercule Poirot. Yay! So, Woo what do you say, Mademoiselle Marceau? Mm -hmm. Which solution shall we All present right. to the Yugoslavian police in Broad? Silence, s'il vous plaît. It is now time to hear what Mademoiselle Marceau has decided. 
All right, so um, yeah, this is going to be in the next uh, video, so stay tuned to hear what our solutions are. And uh, unfortunately, I can't uh, pause this, so we'll see what happens. So stay tuned. This is Puzzle Pieces signing off.